Okay, so I just made this video, but the way I made it with all kind of bullet points and illustrations and stuff, but it ended up being too long and too complicated. So I'm going to try to shorten it down a bit. Uh, this isn't really my style of video, so I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, this is something I just really wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about radios because of all the talk about radios. I know right now there's been a lot of talk about gimbals, so I'm going <laughs> to talk about gimbals and uh, talk about some things that I've never seen anyone actually talk about and how to get smoother flights and stuff like that. So the first thing, and this is the one that I've never seen anyone mention, is stick height. Uh, the higher the sticks are, the more control and precision you're going to get uh, at the cost of the more distance you're going to need to push them. So if your sticks are too high, you may not be able to reach full stick deflection without moving your hand or, or something like that. And if your sticks are too low, you can easily reach full stick, but uh, you'll lose some of that precision. So the second thing, and this is something that I have seen people talk about, is the spring tension on your sticks. I know I think Willie talked about it, uh, maybe Joshua Bardwell talked about it, but basically the short end of it, without going into detail, is you want to not have your sticks super tight. If your sticks are tight, the, my way of thinking of it is, the tighter your sticks are, the more force you're going to need to move it. The more muscle fibers you need to activate, the stronger you're going to need to push this little joint to move the stick, you know, for uh, pinchers as well. Um, and the more of those things you have to do, the more air you're going to get, the more mistakes you're going to make. So loosening up the sticks and having the physical sticks be loose and then going in and adding expo is the best way to uh get a smooth look when you're flying you know the expo plus the rc filter the rc smoothing will uh, really help you out if your sticks are too tight and you have no expo i don't really know maybe it might work for some people but the, the not for the way that i fly when we're going fast to slow movements you know snap rolls and stuff and and then going to slower, more precise movements. It just, it just doesn't look right. It doesn't, it's not going to work consistently for you. And the third thing that is going to affect your smoothness and your flight and your precision when flying is the gimbal size, the stick throw, as they, they call it, the resolution, the physical resolution of your sticks. Um, my theory has always been that the smaller the gimbal is, the more precise you can fly and this is contrary to what a lot of people think and a lot of people tell me i'm wrong about this but i'll try to explain it to you in a second so the smaller your gimbals are right the smaller distance you have to travel all we're doing really think of it as making uh, a line from point a to point b right the shorter that distance is the less chance you have for making error right imagine a tightrope walker and he wants to walk a 10 foot rope. That's pretty easy, right? He'll probably get across it really quick, no problem. Now imagine a 100 foot rope. He's gonna have a lot more pauses on that rope, a lot more wobbling on that rope because it's a longer distance. Uh, another way to think of it is like if you're drawing a circle, right? Anyone can draw like a really small circle, like the size of a dime, for example. But if you wanna draw a circle the size of a basketball, it's going to be so lopsided that most likely you won't even be able to end the circle where you began for most people. This doesn't have as much effect, but also the smaller a gimbal is, the faster you're going to get from point A to point B. And if you want to grab a piece of paper right now and draw two lines, one line really slowly and then take one and draw it fast across the paper really fast. Uh, you'll notice in the in the slow line, you'll have all kind of lumps and little error points. In the in the faster line, it may be crooked overall a little bit, but the individual points are going to be smoother. So this is another advantage of having smaller gimbals. Uh, and this type of error that smaller gimbals create is also going to be easier for your uh, RC smoothing to handle. The step errors are going to be smaller, and that's a lot better for the RC filter to do its thing. One thing that I forgot to add that I'm going to throw in real quick while I'm editing this is you've 
may have been noticing a lot of the new radios that are coming out, they have smaller gimbals. Uh, you may have been noticing a lot of pilots, freestyle and racing. Uh, I think Kevin Stinger Swarm switched over to the Nirvana. Uh, a lot of racers are actually switching over to the x Lite and stuff like that. Jumper T16 came out with the smaller gimbals. Um, a lot of companies are realizing this and moving towards the smaller gimbals. I know that some people are even switching to these radios that don't like small gimbals. So I think it's a mental thing. Uh, for example, Kebab FPV, you know, not picking on him or anything, but he switched to the, the Jumper T16 and he loves it. And at the same time, he's talking about how he hates small gimbals. Just wanted to throw that in there to, uh, this is basically the reason why I made this video is because I've, I've been seeing a lot of people talking about gimbals, a lot of things that I've been saying for a long time, a lot of things that I am learning at the same time. Uh, so yeah, back to the video. Uh, so uh, one thing I maybe didn't say is, so why do I have big gimbals if I think that smaller gimbals are better? Well... I guess there's two reasons for that. The first reason is I just like the way this radio feels. I like the way the gimbals are spread out. I like these big stick ends that I have bought. I'm just comfortable with it. Um, I like the Hall Effect sensor gimbals. That's another thing. The Hall Effect against the potentiometer brushed gimbals, it's not a huge difference, but the Hall Effect gimbals are smoother. And also, I don't need to really be precise with a lot of the movements I make. I'm not racing, I'm not hitting gates. Uh, I do run a decent amount of expo, so... Anyway, thanks for watching the video. If you're wondering about my thumb, that is the prop strike that happened, which I can only bend it till about here. Uh, but it is healing, and those of you that have been asking about it, thank you for asking, and it is healing. So, yeah, I'll see you guys later. Might make some more of these videos. Just let me know what you think. If there's any comments you have, if you think I got something wrong, let me know.